Hi, welcome to English Studies. My name is Salman. In today's video, I'm starting the first unit of this course, which is basic concepts, and the topic is language and meaning. In this video, we shall see communicative act, what communicative act is, what's also known as speech act, what content of the communication is, and ways of interpreting clause structure. A functional grammar aims to make form to function in meaning in context. Three strains of meaning form the basis of a functional interpretation of grammar. The representational, the interpersonal, and the textual. The representational interpretation of grammar is to express our interpretation of the world as we experience it. The interpersonal is to talk with others in order to bring about changes in the environment and the textual is to put or organize what we say or write in such a way that the message is coherent and relevant to the situations. Each of these strands is encoded in the clause as a type of structure. The three strains are mapped onto one another illustrating how the three types of structure or how the three types of meaning combine in one linguistic expression. We have to see the communicative act or the speech act of the linguistic expression, the content of the communication, and the ways of interpreting clause structure. So what is a communicative act? A communicative act is also known as speech act. A communicative act is an utterance that we use to perform some sort of linguistic action or function in communication. For example, we use language to apologize, request, compliment, invite, refuse, read, and complain. So we can di distinguish different kinds of communicative acts such as statements, questions, and directives. In a communicative exchange, the kind of meaning encoded in clause as statements, questions, reminders, invitation, or things is interpersonal meaning. What is the content of communication? Every speech act, whether spoken or written, takes place in a social context. A telephone conversation, writing a letter, buying a newspaper, giving or attending a lecture are all contexts within which different speech acts are carried out. Any happening or state of real life or in an imaginary world of the mind can be expressed through language as a situation or state of affairs. Used in this way, the term situation or state of affairs do not refer directly to extra linguistic reality that exists in the real world, but rather to the speaker's conceptualization of it. Extra linguistic reality is experience that cannot be expressed through words. The components of this conceptualization of reality are known as semantic roles or semantic functions. And they are processes, attributes, participants and circumstances. So what semantic roles or functions are? Processes are actions, events, state, and types of behavior, while participants are entities of all kinds, not only human, but inanimate, concrete, and abstract, which are involved in the process, while attributes are qualities and characteristics of the participants, and circumstances are any kinds of contingent fact or subsidiary situation which is associated with the process or the situation. The kind of meaning expressed by this semantic structure is known as representational meaning or the meaning that has to do with the content of the message. These terms will be elaborated and explained in a very detailed way in my further videos. Now there are three ways of interpreting clause structure. A clause or a simple sentence is the basic unit that embodies our construal of representational and interpersonal meaning. The clause is the unit whose elements can be reordered in certain ways to facilitate the creation of textual meaning. 
The textual resources of the clause, such as the active passive alternative, enable the representational strand and the interpersonal strand of meaning to cohere as a message. Not simply a sentence in isolation, but in relation to what precedes in the discourse. Each type of meaning is encoded by its own structures. The three structures combine to produce one single realization in words. To summarize, the three kinds of meaning derived from the consideration of clause as the linguistic representation of our experience of the world, the communicative exchange between persons and an organized message or text. We now turn to the three types of structures that implement these meanings and they are the clause as representing situation which is called transitivity structure, the clause as interaction which is called mood structures and the clause as message which is called thematic structures. The first one is Clause as representing situation, which is called the transitivity structure. The representational meaning of the clause is encoded through the transitivity structure, whose elements of function include agent, process, recipient, affected, and circumstance. Agent, recipient, and affected are known as participants. Participants are entities of all kinds that are involved in the process. Look at this sentence. Janice will give Chris the bill tomorrow. Janice is the agent. Will give is the process, which is an action. Chris is the recipient. The bill is affected and tomorrow is the circumstance. With the process of giving, like this, the agent is that participant who carries out the action referred to by the verb. The recipient is that participant who receives goods or information encoded as the affected. And circumstances attending the process are classified as locative, temporal, conditional, successive, causal and the resultant. That was experiential or representational meaning. Now the second is the clause as interaction, which you call mood structures. The clause is also a major grammatical unit used by speakers to ask questions, make statements and issue directives. The exchange of information is typically carried out by the indicative mood. Within the indicative mood, asking a question is typically associated with the interrogative mood and making a statement is with the declarative mood. In English, it's the subject and the finite element which carry the burden of syntactic exchange. So in a declarative sentence, we would say Janice will give Chris the bill tomorrow, while in an interrogative, we reverse the subject and the finite element, leaving out the predicator and rest of the clause same. We would say, will Janice give Chris the bill tomorrow? The finite is that element which relates the content of the class to speech event. It does this by referring to present or past or by referring to the speaker's attitude using model. The third one is, the clause is message, which is called thematic structures. Here the speaker organizes the informational content of the clause so as to establish whatever point of departure is desired for the message. This is called the theme, which in English coincides with the first element or elements of the clause. And the rest of the clause is called dream. Now, combining the three types of structures. The three types of structures are here mapped simultaneously onto one example in order to show the tripartite nature and analysis of English classes from a functional point of view. The predicator, object and adjunct are syntactic elements of function which correspond to the semantic roles or functions 
as process, recipient, affected, and circumstances. All these three structures are mapped onto this one example, the experiential, the interpersonal, and the textual. So Janice will give Chris the bill tomorrow. From an experiential perspective, it's agent. From interpersonal, it's subject. And from textual, it's theme. In a typical active declarative clause such as this, the agent, subject, and theme coincide and are described in one wording. But in natural language use, the situation could be expressed in a different way. The clause elements could be reordered. For example, Chris will be given the bill by Janice tomorrow or the bill will be given to Chris by Janice tomorrow or tomorrow Chris will be given the bill by Janice. Now in this case, the Asian subject and theme would not coincide. It happens in a typical active declarative clause where the subject, agent and theme coincide. So the speaker organizes the content of the clause in order to achieve the best effect for their communicative purpose. That was all about the language and meaning from the first unit of the course, Comprehensive Descriptive Grammar. The first unit was the basic concepts. We are not yet finished with the first unit. We are just finished with the first topic of the first unit, language and meaning. As I did talk about the targeted audience in my introductory video to this course, if this seems difficult to you, please go and watch my intermediate level grammar course, which is Practical English Grammar. Thank you and see you again in my next video.